Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I start every Rails project. So um, I start a lot of Rails projects and um, I've done many client projects um, and I start a lot of these for YouTube videos as well to make examples and demos. So um, I've got uh, a set of um, a template almost that I follow to uh, set up every Rails project. So the first thing that I've done here already, just to save a bit of time, is I've run the Rails new command. I always use Postgres as the database. Um, this comes from like deploying on Heroku, but um, we'll save that for another video. Um, I skip JBuilder because I don't need it. Skip test because I want to set up RSpec for tests. And then uh, lately I've been using the CSS Tailwind command because that sets up Tailwind nicely. And then also using the ES build command for JavaScript. So I've already run that and the Rails app has been set up here, as you can see. And the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and install RSpec. So I've got some instructions here in the readme that I'll link to in the description below. Um, but if you want like them to make sure that nothing changes or get the most up-to-date instructions you can obviously go through to the actual uh, official documentation of our spec and device and things like that so the first thing i'm going to do here is uh, open up the gem file and i'm going to go down to the development and test group and we'll just put our spec reels in there and we'll go here and bundle install Now that that is installed, we can come back here and run the following commands. So we'll run the generator to install our spec. And then we will create a bin stub. So this basically allows us to run then bin our spec to shorthand run our tests. Next up, we want to tweak the Reels generators a little bit, and this lets us uh, change them for our spec specifically, but then also um, skip a bunch of the generators that I basically don't want. Um, so it generates uh, helpers and things like that on every, every time you run a generator, and I don't want any of that. So I'm gonna go into config application here, and we'll just scroll down and put this in here and we can remove this generate system tests one because we've got it covered here so the second thing i've added is to run rack deflator and this just gzips all responses uh, going back and forth um, so this is if you're not using something like nginx in front of your reels app when you deploy it that will do gzip and all that sort of stuff. So it's just handy to put this in anyway. Um, can see if you a bit of bandwidth. So now that we have that done, um, there's some tweaks that we want to make. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Reels helper for our spec. And in here, the first thing we're going to do is uncomment this line. So this tells our spec to look in the spec support directory and load all of those files automatically. So it lets us create helpers and things like that. The next things we're going to do then is copy all of these. Um, we're going to put these into the configuration block. So if we come down here and paste these in, this one already exists, so we can take care of that and just format these so these are for device which we'll see in the next step and i'm going to leave them uncommented or commented out for now because we haven't installed device and these two set up helpers for testing active job and action mailbox um, we might not need the mailbox one uh, in most apps but you can uh, decide whether you want that or not um, and this one here basically tells reels to load all of the fixtures that we create as test data so um, this one i i'm going to make a future video on fixtures versus factory bot um, and discuss some of my opinions there 
the next stage then is to create a request spec helper and this basically plugs in some logic for signing in and out users in request specs for device so um, i'll go ahead and create a new file and we'll say support and then request spec helper and i'll just copy all of the contents of this and we'll save that so this basically puts device into test mode when using request specs um, it gives us a helper method we can use to sign a user in programmatically and sign out as well and then this one is if we're testing apis or have javascript uh, responses and stuff it just i find this useful to have so you can type json in your request specs and it'll always be a parsed version of the response body so i like to keep this little helper around now that we've done all that we should be able to go into our terminal here and run bin rspec and there we go it seems to be running obviously we've got no examples yet so we'll get to that uh, shortly um, next up then on the list of things i use in every app is device for authentication so um, again you can check out the official documentation here um, but i'm going to go ahead and copy across these to the gem file and we will run bundle install and next up then we are going to go to config application and we are going to copy this across which basically tells device and um, whenever we're on like a sign in or sign up route to use this auth layout which we'll go ahead and create as well and it basically you'll see in the next step where we begin the the initial styling using tailwind that we want the auth layout to be a more simple version that just kind of show the box in the middle of the screen with your your sign in form so um, i'm going to copy this and we'll go back into config application and we'll just paste this in here and hit save so now we'll come down and we need to paste the following into application controller so we can go here and this basically tells device to configure params and we can basically go in here and say that we want some additional fields on our form so device by default will only be an email address and a password and we want a first and last name in the form and also on our sign up form we want to make sure that users tick uh, accept the terms and conditions button so we'll hit save here and also what we're doing is uh, running this before action to authenticate users on every every single uh, route in our app by default so i i find this is a better way of doing things so you don't leave any routes open and then if you do have routes you can be explicit and say skip before action authenticate user and you can even pass in like only and only run it on the show action for instance so this is how i like to do things and be kind of most secure by default and then open up things as and when they're needed so now we can go ahead and install device so we'll first run this to install it and and um, we'll copy across these flash notice and alert and we'll copy these and put them into our application uh, layout and we'll save that and um, now would probably be a good time to go ahead and create that auth layout that we talked about so i'm just going to copy everything in application and we can tidy that up later and 
finally, we're going to run the generate device user. So this will make our user model. And if we run this, it creates a migration with all of the device fields. So email, password, um, and then things for reset passwords and all that sort of stuff. So um, you can also then decide at this point, I'll just clean things up here. You can decide at this point what modules for device you want to enable. So say for instance, we want trackable and that basically stores signing count and when the user last signed in. So we can go ahead and uh, just uncomment these and hit save. You can do confirmable where you want the user to confirm their email address within a set amount of time. Um, you can do lockable as well. So if they fail to enter their password a certain number of times, you can lock their account and things like that. So we'll maybe put lockable in as well and we'll hit save. The last thing I want to do in here is basically create columns for first name and last name. And then we'll just line these up and um, we're going to make these uh, required. So we'll say null false, um, we'll hit save. And now would be a good time to run our migrations. So we can do bin reels db migrate. Oh, and we haven't actually created the databases. So we'll run that first and then migrate and then we'll migrate for the test database as well. So there we go. Um, next up then, Devise will send various emails. So it'll send emails um, for password resets. And if you, ch you can configure it that if you change your password, it will email and let you know for security purposes. So we want to set up letter opener and this is just a really cool gem that whenever an email sends in your Reels app in development, it just pops that open in a web browser to show you what the email would be. So we'll configure that. I've already added it to the gem file here. Um, and we'll go down and set up our development environment. And we'll just copy these two items. And then we'll come down and add these in at the bottom. Um, next, we want to generate the device views. So this will basically copy across all the device views into our app so we can edit them. So we can go to like uh, registrations new, for instance, and add in our first and last name fields so that when the user signing up, those are passed through to our app. And we'll just go ahead and do that now. Um, I should look up what the autocomplete for that is, but I'm not going to do that uh, just this moment. And then we'll also put one through here for last name. And we'll save that. And now if we run our app, so we'll go in here and run bin dev, and this will run our real server, our Tailwind CSS and the ES build JavaScript. And we can open a new terminal there to run other commands. So we'll come through here and uh, load up our app. And as you can see, we've got our uh, default Reels page here. So we can come in and say users sign in and you'll see we've got the device. So it's not styled. We're gonna do that in the next part and um, we can go ahead and hit sign up and this will take us through to our sign up form. And so we can go here and click sign up. And as you can see, nothing works. So there is some stuff we can do with device to get it playing nicer with turbo, 
which is the issue going on here. And the easiest thing we can do, I know there might be better fixes than this for now, but the easiest thing we can do is go in here and say data and turbo false. And when we hit save on that, that should basically make this form just not pay attention to turbo. So if we hit uh, sign up, we get email can't be blank, password can't be blank. The other thing we want is our first name and last name fields to also be required. So we'll go into our user model and come down here and add some validations. So we'll say validates first name, last name, presence, true. And then if we go back here and hit our sign up button again, you'll see we get errors that those need to be filled in as well. So we can go here and uh, fill in some stuff. So I'll say Pete test and we'll say Pete at example.org and give it a password and a password confirmation. And then I'll hit my sign up button and we get redirected to the root. I believe we are signed in. So if I go to users, sign in again, we get redirected to the root again. So we have registered and we're now signed in. So now we will go across and um, we've added the additional fields. Now we want to create a protected root um, so that you can only access this page from uh, being signed in. And we also want to create a request spec for that in our spec. So we'll first go ahead and generate this root. So we'll say, generate a pages controller with a home action. And then we can say members area. And then we can rely on the fact the user signed in here. So let's say current user dot first name we'll hit save. So the next thing we want to do is go to our roots and wire this up. Although we can probably write a spec first and do some test driven development here. So we'll maybe go in here and say, uh, generate a pages request spec. Oh, and we've already got one apparently. So So now we can go in here and we can say, we'll just make this the home page. So we say get forward slash, and then we'll say context when signed in. And we'll say it returns HTTP success. So that'll be get here. And we want it to be a successful status. Um, we can also say expect response.body to include and we'll say a name of like test for the user. Um, then we probably want to say if you're not signed in. That it redirects to sign in. So we'll say get forward slash and then we'll say expect response to redirect to and I think it's new user session path. We'll see this in a second. So we can run this one first. And we get invalid URI. So let's go to our request spec helper and we've got our host. Let's just change this to uh, localhost 3000 and run that again. And this is a bit better. So we've got no root matches get forward slash. So we can then go to our roots 
and make this default to pages home and then run again and we've got it passing so we can go into our application controller and we can see this before action authenticate user so that's what is stopping um, our users from accessing the home page which is great um, so we can close out of this we'll go back to our pages spec and we will make our um, make both of these pass so the first thing that we want to do here is have a way of signing in the user so as i said to you before we created uh, the request spec helper which has a sign in method and then it needs to take a user and so what we want to do is say let user and we're going to use fixtures for this so we can go through here and we can say users and then we'll say um, test as we'll create this test user and so we will go to our spec directory we'll create a new file and we'll say fixtures slash users dot yaml and then paste in uh, our test user here so we've set up the email and name and we're using the device encryptor to set a password and now we can hopefully run this and see what happens and it passes so we can run both tests in our suite here and they both pass now it is kind of a good idea to see um to see this fail so maybe we want to just comment this out and make sure that when we run it that way it's a redirect so we know that our sign in logic is working and that's all good so now we have all that working we come to the final step um, here and I'm going to put this in another, in another video because it's going to be quite long um, so this step I, I basically go to Tailwind UI pick a layout and style for the app pick it pick some tailwind ui uh, styles for the authentication pages and then just start getting all of that integrated so um i will show you that in the next video cheers